guys welcome back to my channel or if you're new welcome my name is Monica and today I'm finally ready for the most part to do my review of a foundation I've been testing out for weeks and weeks this is the makeup revolution conceal and define foundation now it took it took me a lot longer to test this out than I thought it would just because it just really confused me I'll get into that a little bit more a little bit later on, but before we jump into the full review, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you do like these foundation reviews, and if you haven't and you'd like to, I hope you would consider subscribing and hitting that little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday. Yeah, the hair is looking a little bit crazy. <laughs> I need to deep condition it later today, but uh, I really want to take a nice bubble bath because it's Saturday, so I figured I would do that a little bit later, but I did want to get this foundation review up while I still had the thoughts fresh in my mind. I also, on my eyes, just got a new palette in the mail, which what else is new? I, I have so many new palettes coming in, but this is my first Melt Cosmetics palette or shadows overall. This is the Smoke Obsessions palette, and I've only, like, I literally got it in the mail yesterday, so I've only tried out a couple of shades, but oh, you know how much I love green, and it looks very cute. So anyway, into the actual foundation review. So this retails for $12 at Ulta, which is where I picked up my shades. And I happened to pick up the shades that I had in the concealer. The concealer is one of my holy grail affordable concealers ever. I love that concealer. I actually, they just had a sale on Ulta for Black Friday. It was like buy two, get one free, or it was some kind of thing. And I bought a couple more because I love that concealer. So since I knew what shades in the concealer worked best for me, I picked up F6 and F5 in the foundation. F5 is a little bit dark, and F6 is actually a little bit light, so I feel like they don't truly compare perfectly to the concealer shades, because F5 in the concealer was actually like a perfect skin tone match to my actual skin tone, whereas F6 was a little bit light. Let's go ahead and run through really quick all the claims they make for this foundation on the website because I do agree with most of them, but I do have a couple of bones to pick here and there. On Ulta, it says, Makeup Revolution's Conceal and Define Full Coverage Foundation offers lightweight yet buildable coverage in 24 skin true shades. With an oil-free yet creamy and comfortable formula that dries down to a long-lasting demi-matte finish, it won't settle into fine lines or cling to dry patches. Mm. Housed in a luxe glass bottle with a jumbo doe foot applicator for greater control and less waste. Mm. This foundation offers highly pigmented coverage that can be layered or diffused to suit your look. Okay. I will say, I really agree with the demi matte dry down finish. It really does dry down. I didn't set my forehead today. I really just set the area right here with powder because... I like to just set that area with powder so that my, I can ensure that my bronzer, contour, everything blends out on top of it really well. But it does dry down on my skin. Now, the biggest downside to this foundation that I've found throughout my weeks of testing is that it ten, it can dry down too much. It is a very matte foundation, which I think is going to be great for if you have oily skin and you need something full coverage because this is super full coverage. But for someone with a combo skin who does have some dry spots and does have some oily spots, it's, it's not the greatest. So like right here, I've only had this foundation on for less than an hour. I just finished my face and it does sink in and look really dry in like my smile lines. And this is kind of right after I put it on. So I did see it not look that great on some dry spots on my face and I already saw it settling into fine lines. So those are the two claims for the foundation that I wouldn't agree with, but for the most part, everything else is great. Talking about the packaging itself, I actually find this fairly messy, and I thought it would be really nice to have a nice big doe fit one, but I don't know if it's just the way that this is packaged, but I feel like every time I do this, product kind of spills out everywhere. I always find little splotches of foundation on my desk. I sometimes get it on my clothing, which is never a great thing. It's so hard to get foundation out of clothes. But I will say it's it's a little bit messier than I thought that it would be. But if you know that ahead of time, just you gotta open it very slowly and just be careful because the way that I applied it, I'll throw the video of the um, application that I did today on, I really do have to go in a few times with a couple of different dips into the actual container. So if you're doing that and you're not paying attention, you can make a big mess because if you just 
put it in and out really quickly, it's going to get everywhere. That being said, I haven't tried taking out the stopper right there. I'm kind of afraid to because I think I would get way too much product out at one time, but that, that is an option. The stopper does come off fairly easily from what I can see. If you do want to either go in with a different brush or kind of tap it out onto a palette instead of using the doe foot. This is a foundation that looks really nice as soon as you put it on. The best primer that I've tried that works well with this for my combo skin is just to use a very hydrating primer, maybe even a primer spray like the one from Smashbox. It does look really nice on top of that and it does help a little bit with the creasing around my mouth. I did try this with a matte primer and I looked like a mummy. So if you have combo skin, if you have dry skin, don't even touch a matte primer before going into this foundation because it'll look kind of crazy. So you're going to take a super moisturizing primer. The best way that I've found to apply this is with a fairly dense sponge because by using a brush, I feel like you're just pushing it more into if you have any dry spots or if you're um, trying to avoid it sinking into your fine lines, the brush isn't really helping. The brush, it can look nice if you apply it with the brush and then smooth it out with a sponge, but it looks infinitely better if you just use a sponge to apply it. So the best way was just to use the doe foot, put it onto my face, and then blend it out with the sponge. Of course, my favorite sponge being the Dollar Sponge from AOA. I love that sponge to the death. It is a little bit denser than your typical Real Technique sponge or your Beauty Blender, but it's such a great sponge. And I feel like that sponge was actually perfect for blending out this foundation. Other than the creasing right here around my mouth, I don't really have any other immediate problems with the foundation like as soon as you put it on my issues come from how it looks at the end of the day because no matter what primer i use no matter what powders or anything that i used with it this foundation never looked great at the end of the day either i had a lot more creasing around my nose and my mouth or it just looked really dry I remember one day I worked a full day, came home, looked in the mirror, and just from right here down was incredibly dry. I feel like this is a foundation that would look really nice if you only need to wear something for a couple of hours or if you have really oily skin. I think this is definitely something that should be or is marketed more towards people with oily skin because on my oily areas it actually looks pretty nice like on the tip of my nose it looks really nice it doesn't look great around here which is where i tend to get really dry it looks really nice right here which is where i'm really oily and it tends to look really bad right here in my smile lines where it's just a little bit drier so it's because of that kind of back and forth like for me the pros and the cons were fairly equal which just really confused me because I had no idea like how to use this foundation because I know by using it by itself, it didn't, there was always something I could pick out that I didn't like. So I am mixing this foundation with others, trying to see if there's anything that would work better with it because I do like how full coverage it is and I do like the way that it can just set down on its own. There's not a lot of foundations that do that, but I feel like this is a foundation that really only works well on parts of my face. And so far, I haven't found a foundation that it works really well mixed in with. So final thoughts, I would really only suggest you try this out if you have really oily skin. If you have dry skin, I, I would skip this one. And if you have combo skin, uh, I feel like you'll have the same experience I did where you're just very confused. So thank you so much for watching. Hope if you like this, you'll give it a thumbs up. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.